Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. Bob Stewart, how are you today? Well, okay, so Chad, I, I, I'm, a, I'm excited as always. I'm a little bit nervous here because like it's <laughs> it's you and well, we're going to introduce Ryan here in just a second. Probably like the two most fit guys. I, mean, I don't know if you're like the, the most fit, like if we were to take your shirts off and flex your muscles, but like you guys are super health conscious. You, you live that lifestyle of, of, of healthiness and, and really both of you, but the, the reason I wanted to bring Ryan in and, and chat with him today is, is he lives a lot of the mantras that we talk about in Win, Make, Give. And so I'm a little bit intimidated, I guess, if I'm being honest, which is crazy, but uh, it's true. Bob, you're not just intimidated. You're sitting over there eating chocolate. <laughs> okay, so you're, I, you're coping. You're coping because I, yeah, we I can't. Am. I told you guys before we started that I was going to sit here because you guys are probably both eating like, I don't know, bird seed and <laughs> flak oil or something. I don't know. Like, I don't even know the names of the stuff you guys are probably eating. But yeah, I'm gonna, I ate some Snickers. I had a Milky Way. They've got candy on the way in the office here. You know, it's, it's, it's Halloween time or whatever. So anyway, yeah. And Bob, you can be sure I'm going to be bringing you all my extra candy so it is not in my house if the kids don't come get it. So <laughs> kids, if you want extra candy – Come trick or treat Chad's house because it's got to all go. I can't be left with any. All right. So, Bob, you're right. We, we're bringing on a guy. I came in today and I said to you, Bob, what do you want to talk about? And because, folks, we don't do like days of preparation on some of these episodes. And, and you said to me, you know, Chad, I really want to interview Ryan because he is a guy who lives the win, make, give lessons. He's grown up through a lot of those. They've changed his life a lot. He lives the 15 point plan at a high level. You wanted to bring someone on we could talk about. So I want to bring Ryan to the Win Make Give audience. Ryan, welcome to Win Make Give. Hey, guys. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chad. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm, I'm so thankful to be here. Well, we're, we love having you here. Ryan, some people might recognize your voice, yet most of our audience is going to be like, who is this Ryan guy? So give us an introduction. We like to let you introduce yourself to the audience. What do you want to tell them about you? Who do you want to be known as? Introduce yourself to Win Make Give. My name is Ryan Gregg. I'm here in the Bellingham, Washington office of the Ben Kinney team in place. I have been here about seven years. Uh, you can call me Ryan or you can call me Real Estate Ryan, like most people do, because that's what I do. I used to be known as DJ Ryan I. So I came from a career in music. I traveled all over the world. I was a DJ and then I had my son, Bentley. He's nine now. So when he was born, I got into real estate about seven years ago. And I've been doing that ever since. So I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a realtor. I'm, a, uh, I'm just a guy that likes to have fun and likes to sell houses and hang out with cool people like you guys. And awesome. a DJ. <laughs> and a DJ. I, I grew up in Sonoma, California. I grew up amongst a reggae community. My best friend, uh, who was one year older than me and born across the street from me, started collecting records when we were 13, 14 years old. And I always looked up to him and he started collecting reggae records specifically. And we fell in love with reggae music, with the Caribbean and Jamaican culture. And uh, in college, I started DJing for fun. And then I kind of made a career out of it. <laughs> that's, that's, um, were you like, as a child, Ryan, did, was music like a part of your house? Do you always remember your parents playing music or was it like, was it not until that experience with the neighbor that you really like? Took, took hold of music we weren't a very musical household no but nick's family was his father was from his father's family was from brazil they had drum kits set up over there uh they would play music all the time and so i would go over there and they were very musical over there my family was not but i would go over there and there was always music playing his he had an older brother too so we thought his older brother was really cool and he was coming finding new music and so we grew up around that. And like I said, Nick, who uh, I was, I've known him literally my, my whole life. I was born across the street from him uh, and he's my best friend. And I, I always looked up to him and his older brother. And so when they started collecting records, I just kind of followed along with it. And then um, I got really into the technical side of music and really studied DJing and got, I guess, pretty good at it, um, the technical side of it. So his passion for the art and my passion for learning how to really DJ uh, came together and we formed a, a group of DJs that's still actually uh, effective today. I'm not in effect with it, but uh, we started the Bless Coast sound system because we were based off the West Coast. And we, like I said, we, we toured, we toured all over the country. We've toured around the world. And then we started doing artists and tour management where we would bring artists from um, specifically Jamaica, 
because that's where the reggae music hub is, of course. And uh, we did tour management. And I actually finished my real estate school while on tour with two artists from Jamaica, a three-week-long tour. That's where I finished my tour, uh, finished my license back in 2015. What, um, so you, you'd mentioned your son being born, and, and you, you, as you were telling your story, you kind of combined that with this idea that like shortly thereafter you got into real estate. I, um, wait, a, wait a minute, Bob. Before you get there, I got to go back a second, Ryan. Okay, okay. What is it about reggae music? I mean, I, I worked in the Caribbean for, for a few years, so I understand and appreciate it, absolutely. But it's not like most kids come to school and they're like rocking out to the reggae music, the same as the you know top 40 and bubblegum pop or whatever. What was it that introduced you guys to reggae and then made reggae just take such a hold with you? Reggae spoke to me from a very young age. There was a couple things. I, I mean, I love, I love the beat. I actually love just the musical aspect of it. But in addition to that, I fell in love with the culture. I fell in love with the Jamaican and the Caribbean culture and specifically the, the reggae and Rastafarian culture of a natural lifestyle of, a, you know, like Bob Marley would say, one love I was all about. Um, I got in a lot of trouble in high school and I was kind of a lost kid. I had a, not a rough upbringing, but my upbringing was challenging like most people's. And when I was kind of lost as a, a teenager, I found, I guess, reggae music. And it just spoke to me. It spoke to me of having a community. It spoke to me of, of like I said, the natural lifestyle. Um, I was born a vegetarian. My mom owned a vegetarian catering company when I was born. And Interesting concept. He was born a vegetarian. Yeah. yeah. And I don't was, remember my first piece of meat. So I guess I was born a vegetarian <laughs> too, Ryan. <laughs> you know, the first... Uh, Gosh, many years of my life, uh, I was vegetarian. And then I joined the Ben Kenny team and became a meat eater. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, Chad, it was the, the, the whole culture behind it and the music behind it. I started going to music festivals and all of a sudden I had this community and this culture. And I would watch my best friend DJ and, and I would think, man, you know, we really had a family and we had a, a community. And I love, I love the rhythm of reggae music. And um, so I just gravitated towards it. And I love, at that time when I was in high school, um, I was a little bit of a rebel. <laughs> so the rebellious um, Jamaican culture, I just, I, I loved it. And I still do. I still so, so it's as much the community and culture of the music as it was the music itself. Absolutely. Interesting. All right, Bob, what, what were you going to ask? Well, I just so wanted to go I, back on that. Look, I, I, and I could be wrong here, by the way. I just have this, this, this like, it's an assumption, I guess, or it's, it's like some belief that's landed. You probably weren't making a lot of money during that time, right? Like, I'm assuming it was incredibly fulfilling and, and you were having a lot of fun and you got to travel. But like, and I guess the reason I asked that question is because you kind of tied having your son and this new responsibility to this, this career change for you. So talk for a second, Ryan, about like, you were getting to travel the world and have a lot of fun. I'm assuming you weren't like, you know, making a, a good living. Is that right? Or, or am I totally off base there? I could be. Um, it, I think it's relative, Bob. At the time yeah. when I was a young man that did not have a kid, did not have big dreams and ambitions, I was really happy to make 500 bucks a night. You know, to me, that was a lot of money. And I would do that a couple nights a week. I did a Wednesday night here in Bellingham for many years. And it was just my partner and I, and we would make five, six, 700 bucks every Wednesday. And, and before having a child, before having dreams of wait, investing. Wait, hold on. Like at the Royal or like where were you guys doing this at? At, at the Wild Buffalo. The Wild Buffalo. Okay. Wrong and way. I owe so much. Um, I, I just owe so much to the Wild Buffalo because uh, they let us bring our Wednesday night there. And we did it for five or six years. That night started to slow down. My income started to go down. And I started to realize not only am I you know, getting older, uh, but the income – went away enough. But to answer your question, Bob, I think the most I ever made as a DJ in one year was like maybe 40 grand. Maybe, you know, so relative in my, in my twenties, that wasn't terrible, but you know, once I had a child and learned more about what I wanted to do in life, that was, that was not enough to hit my dreams and goals. What was there? Was it, was it Bentley? Was it like Bentley's birth? Cause you said it was a couple years later that you, was there some catalyst that made you realize that like maybe you weren't aiming high enough or you, you, your goals weren't, weren't big enough or you wanted to build a bigger life for, for you and your son? Was there any kind of a catalyst around that? That was certainly a part of it. And I knew 
you know, as much as I love DJing, I knew that I had a greater purpose. I knew deep down that, that DJing was fun and it was a stage of my life, but I knew that I had a greater purpose. And yeah, absolutely. He was the catalyst. Like I said, he's nine now. And I, I think it took a lot actually for me to quote unquote, give up on that dream. I thought I wanted to be a world famous DJ that could make it and build a life. And I knew deep down that that wasn't my purpose. And so it took a while. It took a couple of years. And I felt like I was a failure because I did not hit that goal and dream. And I'm thankful that I, that I shifted, you know, sometimes, uh, giving up on something is, is not a bad thing. And I gave up on DJing and then I went back to it. I do it for a hobby now, but as an income and as a profession, I, I gave up on that when he was born because I knew, well, not just the money, but also I was out very late at night. I was traveling a lot. Um, back then I drank back then. I like, you know, I, 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 I partied and, and I don't do that now. And I knew that that was, I didn't waking up with a newborn hungover is absolutely miserable. <laughs> and yeah. so the lifestyle that went along with it was not what I wanted to be or who I wanted to be. Ryan, what's the ultimate lesson learned from that experience? If you could sit down and, and take one lesson to teach your, your son when he gets older or to share with our audience, what's the one lesson from that time of your life? That's and no, really folks, we did not prepare Ryan with the questions in advance. So you'll hear natural curveballs here. We're going to give him some, we want him to dig deep. That's a, I mean, it's a great question, Chad. You know, so as you guys know, I have a business partner also named Ryan. He is uh, 25. He's 15 years younger than me. And sometimes I think I go, gosh, if I was, if I would have done what he's doing now, I would have been so much farther ahead. And I sometimes have like these regrets. And then I go, no way, no way would I have changed anything. So I guess my biggest lesson was, um, do what you love and don't worry about the money. Do, do don't be a, afraid to go out on a limb and try something and push. I mean, I took our DJ crew from a small group of DJs that became one of the most well-known DJ groups on the West Coast to then bringing artists. The artists that I brought, um, you know, recently performed on Jimmy Fallon and are some of the most well-known reggae artists in the world now. So the lesson that I learned was go, go for it, man. Like, go for it. Don't feel like, you know, I, I was graduating college. I got a degree in outdoor education um, in, in the education field in Western. And I, and I kept DJing, you know, and there was that thought of, gosh, I should be using my degree, but I loved DJing. And so I did what I love. I think my dad and mom taught me like, just do what you love and the money will follow. And I, I made enough money to get by. But I think the lesson I learned was, uh, especially in your 20s, like experiment, like play around. Don't feel like you got to know it all. Don't feel like you got to come out of college or go to college right away and follow some plan that's not your path or plan. And I did that. And I'm really proud of what we built. So the lesson was just just go for it. Live, uh, travel, have fun. All right. So Chad, I hope people, real, I, hang on, Bob. I okay. want to apologize to all the parents driving right now with their teen age children in the no. car who just heard no. that message and they're like, no, 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 you are going to college, right? No, okay. no, 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 you are. <laughs> Which is a perfect segue. Okay, Chad, we never know what order these things are going to come out in, right? Yeah. Or what order the podcast episodes are going to come out in, but either yeah. right before this or a couple a couple episodes before, or maybe a couple after, you're going to hear us talk about Colin Powell. You're right. And, and we did an episode on Colin Powell and one of his 13 rules he lived by is don't let other people make choices for you. That's right. And so what you're saying is there's a bunch of parents driving around in their cars with their kids who are going to make choices for their children. And look, should should you know most of these kids go to college and get an education? They probably should. And Ryan did, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah, right? I, I went to college. I got my degree. I finished my degree. It took me a little bit longer, you know, than the four years. But I love that. And I would, um, you know, the interesting thing was uh, I got a degree in, in education. I was teaching kids, and I and I sometimes I say, well, I never used that degree. And then I look up and realize. I'm teaching in a very similar way, you know, and just like DJing, I'm on stage in a, in a similar way. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to spread a message to people and bring people together in, in a similar community. So my life in a very interesting way has all been tied together. And now I, you're just, instead of spreading the, 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 I don't know what you call it, the gospel of, of, of great reggae music and culture, you're spreading the wealth building and home ownership and, and these different principles. Absolutely. Can, can I go back to, uh, you said something interesting. I want to dive in on it a little bit. You said that making that transition 
where you went from, from being a DJ to, to you're going to start a career in real estate. You said there was, you felt like a failure. Can you talk to me about like, how did you harness that? How did you, how did you work through that? And how did you turn that into something good instead of something that you just, you know, that drunk monkey sitting on your shoulder, Ryan going, yeah, you are a failure. You're, you're not going to, you're going to probably fail at the next thing too. Like, how did you harness that? The good thing was, was that it didn't really limit me in my belief of me as a failure in my real estate career. Um, I just felt like I had given up on something in the music career. But what I did was I just, I dove all in. And, and I knew that if I'm going to leave this career, I have to make it in this career. And we'll talk about what happened during that time that almost forced me to make it. But I just switched every, I switched a lot about me. I, I wore a suit and tie because I felt like, Nobody, I had this limiting belief. Nobody's going to want to work with me because I was a DJ and my sphere will know that I was a DJ. They're going to think, oh, look at the DJ. He didn't make it as a DJ and now he wants to try real estate. Well, I'm not going to work with him. So I said, well, forget that. Let me put on my suit and tie because that's like my superhero cape. And I would walk out of the house with my suit and tie on. And that's how in my head I would trick myself to think I'm a realtor now. And look, I'm a professional now. I got my suit and tie. And so even though I, I gave up on the music and I'm thankful that I did, it didn't affect me getting into real estate. It didn't make me feel like I would fail at real estate. Of course, I was nervous. And of course, it was a massive change. But I right away had so many things happen that put this huge weight and chip on my shoulder to go, I'm, there's nothing that's going to hold me back from making this work. Wait, so tell, tell me what, what happened. What do you mean? So I mean, in, in, in a good way, in a bad way, like tell us the story. Okay. So I got, like I said, I finished my real estate license in February, February. I started in May, 20, 2015. Okay. I had no idea who Ben or Jolene were. No idea who Ben Kinney was. I was ready to go work at another brokerage and I came to a Keller Williams career night. And uh, I instantly connected with the team leader that was here. I really liked his energy. And I said, you know what? Maybe I will work here instead of the other brokerage that I was going to. Nick because or I, who, what, who was it? It was Nick Cameron. Nick, yep. Okay. Yep. You know, similar energy as me, right? Sure. I really enjoyed his energy. So I said, you know, maybe I'm going to, maybe I'm meant to be here. And that was because my friend from the bar scenes, Ian Steger had started here. Well, Nick Cameron said, well, what do you do for work? And I said, well, actually I'm a DJ. I'm kind of finishing up with that. He said, well, why don't you come DJ our end of the year party? The band just canceled. So I remember DJing that end of the year party and I remember seeing uh, Nick Berard at Keller Williams here and Paul Bolinoff, two guys that I really looked up to because they were the agents that won agent of the year that year. And I was on stage as the DJ watching them get agent of the year. So I started in May. Uh, I came into the Ben Kinney team with zero experience. I was married at the time to Bentley's mother. Uh, her name is Megan. And um, because I was DJing before that, I was out at nights. She owned a salon. She would work during the days. Her mother was the one that was going to watch Bentley during the day while I was at work since she was at work. I started in May and in June, the next month, uh, a very healthy um, grandma of Bentley, she got diagnosed with stage four cancer mm. and they gave her two months to live out of nowhere. So totally threw the, the family upside down. Um, and we had to make some massive changes. It obviously massively impacted and affected me, uh, but more so Bentley's mother and the, and the whole family. So the plan of her watching Bentley changed. Unfortunately, just a few months later, she passed away. Also during that time, uh, my ex-wife and I had a rough time and we decided to separate. That's hard. I mean, go, like going through death is a really, really hard taxing on a, on a good relationship, let alone, a, you know, a relationship that could use work. Or, I mean, that's so I, yeah, that's, that's tough. Yeah. So it, I started in May, June, she was diagnosed. November, she passed away. Uh, Bentley's mother and I split up. But a couple months before that, I was still DJing on the weekends and I was driving home from a DJ night in Seattle in August, August 9th to be exact. And uh, I had had a couple glasses of wine uh, and the wedding went a couple hours later and they paid me to stay later and I was just beat tired. And frankly, I was probably drunk and I drove home from Seattle and I fell asleep. 
and I woke up upside down in my car on the freeway. And I went to jail. So uh, June, she was diagnosed. August 9th, I got a DUI, crashed my car. Uh, Bentley's mom said, I'm, I'm not coming to pick you up. You messed up, you know, the next morning when I was sitting in jail. She was so mad. She, like, how, how could you do that during all this stuff that's going on? Then her mom passed away. Then my dad got diagnosed with cancer. And then he passed away. Um, and during all that time, you know, when my dad passed away, I'm, I mean, I'm just like broken. And I, I thought that um, when I had crashed my car, I'm like bawling my eyes out in the office with Jolene thinking, they're going to kick me out of here. You know, like I'm a freaking loser. And Jaleen was so supportive of me. And I mean, I showed houses guys on a freaking bike for three weeks. <laughs> I didn't have a car. That's awesome. That's and, get it done. That's great. You know, and, and, and during that time though, um, I guess like Jaleen believed in me and Ben believed in me. And that was still when Ben was in the office a little bit more, not a ton, but a little bit more, just enough. And when my dad died, he was the, Ben was the first person that I called because I had nobody. I mean, I really had nobody. And Ben took me out on a hike. And he said that in some of the podcasts before, you know, when he talks about loyalty and being unrecruitable. And he, I don't think he usually mentions my name, but that's me. He took me out on a hike that day. And that was just one of the millions of reasons why I have so much love for Ben and Jeline, because in my hardest, darkest times, those guys were there for me. And all I did during that time was hang out in this dang office. So I joke with people probably to get through the hard time for myself. They say like, how did you sell 45 homes in your first year? And I say, cause I didn't want to go home, man. <laughs> if I went home, I had nobody to go home to and I would just cry. Hmm. So Ryan, take, take a deep breath for a second, right? We'll, we'll give you a second there. Um, you get me choked up a little bit over here, dude. I've heard uh -huh. this story before. Jesus Christ. And, and, and for those of you who haven't, we, we apologize. We hope you had Kleenex nearby if you need it and all that stuff. Uh, Ryan, I want to ask you, during that time, during that, it's like a year that if you could go back and, I mean, I'd never say erase the year, but if you could go back and, and erase a year, that's the year to erase with all the things that happened. But a lesson came out of it, right? I'm always about that. And I'm always looking for that here on the Windmake Give. We're always wanting to find it. What's the lesson that came from the horrible experience of the DUI, the accident, the, the loss of your dad, the loss of your, your marriage at that time. What was the lesson that you today can still look back on and say, I didn't know it at the time, yet here's what I took from all of that? I'm actually going to put a label on that because I was reading, uh, I really enjoy the teachings of Ditch Nat Han. He is a Vietnamese Zen Buddhist. And I was reading a book from him called True Love last night, Awakening the Heart. And they talk specifically about the non-duality of Buddhism. Kind of like you can never really appreciate food if you've never been starving. Like Chad, you know, we're intermittent fasting. That first meal of the day is so freaking good because you haven't eaten for a while. Yes. Right? And, and so for me, my life, like nothing can harm me anymore. Nothing can get me down anymore. My every day is amazing now. Every moment I'm so full of joy and gratitude because of the hard things that I've been through. So the lesson in that is, first of all, like this too shall pass. Like this will pass. Like if you're not dead, you're still here and be thankful for that. I I I could and should have maybe died that night. That night, I had a dream of me seeing my dead body and my son and my ex-wife looking over that body crying. And that was the snap and the wake up call that I needed. I haven't drank alcohol since that day. So I got a second chance and I owe it to myself, to my son and to the world to make an impact every day. So the lesson is, first of all, be thankful for what we've got because we woke up this morning. So every day we got to be thankful. The lesson was, just keep going. The lesson was that this will pass. So when, when mother-in-law got diagnosed, dang, that's rough. When we got divorced, dang, that's rough. When I get the DUI, oh my gosh, like the world's going to end. Then I get the freaking call that my dad's dead. And it's like, oh my gosh, when is this going to end? But you know what? That was the year I sold 45 homes. That was the year I made 
more money than ever. That was the year that I became rookie of the year. And instead of DJing on that dang stage, I was on that freaking stage. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love that. Right. And so the lesson was keep going. Never give up, man. Never give up. And I share that with my kids, you know, my son and his team when we were at soccer practice. That's the lesson. Keep going. This too shall pass and be thankful for what we got. You know, I had a mentor in my life who always said to me, uh, Tim, I don't believe Tim necessarily knows even that the podcast is here or can figure out how to get a podcast to listen to it. But, <laughs> but Tim, and I love him, but Tim was a mentor of mine and that was his, his saying all the time. And when things were bad, he would always grab you and say, hey, this too shall pass. But I'll tell you, when things were really good, he always grabbed you and said, hey, this too shall pass. So folks, that always applies. You always need to be remembering we're never going to always be going up and we're never always going to be going down. It's always going to pass and we're going to get the opportunity to go up and go down because that's what makes us appreciate the ups because we do experience some of those downs. So this too shall pass. Powerful message to remember. Ryan. Okay, so Ryan, we got you in the business now. Yeah. You're, you're in real estate. You, you've gone through some horrific challenges. You've gone through some massive changes that are going on. You now have become a member of, let's just say, Ben Kinney's world. Ben Kinney teaches lessons on win, make, give all the time. Ben Kinney creates things like the 15-point plan. And folks, if you haven't checked out the 15-point plan podcast, come join Jolene and I on the 15 point plan, plan podcast, which you can find wherever you get your podcast or by going to winmakegive.com or 15 pointplancom Ryan, give me one lesson that has been shared to you from the teachings of Ben Kinney that has made the biggest difference since he's come into your world. I mean, first off, before you even try to answer that question, my God, Chad. Just one. Are you kidding me? That's good luck, Ryan. <laughs> That's a challenging. Of course, like there's there's a million. There there's a million. I am, and Ben knows this, I think, but I'll say it again. I'm forever grateful to Ben. Ben and I have an interesting relationship. Um, we have a very unique relationship, and I'm incredibly thankful for Ben in so many ways. I mean, what is it? What did it used to say on his door, though, Bob? Everybody's got these titles. Do you remember Jennifer? what he used to say? I don't, what what did it say? CEO to janitor is what, what he's going to have his title as. I don't know if that's actually on the Like a nice guy, like Mr. Nice Guy. Like uh, basically be nice. Like basically yeah. don't be a jerk. Yeah. Like, like be humble. You know, I, I, I just, it's in our, in our values to be humble. And my head blew up in my first year. I sold 45 homes. I was the rookie of the year. I was, Holy cow. You're on the stage. You had the trophy. Yeah, for sure. I had the trophy. Well, then, Bob, your freaking mom comes in and sells 79 homes <laughs> next year. <laughs> and Gail comes in and just blows everything away. So I think, I mean, the real estate lessons never end. I don't want real estate lessons because not everybody listening to this no. has anything to do with real estate. I want the life lesson. What's the life lesson? Is it be kind, be humble? Is there another life lesson? Be kind. It's be humble. You know, sometimes I'll storm out of this office thinking I'm in a hurry to get somewhere and I'll bump into Ben and, and, and he is not storming around anywhere. He moves very calmly. And I'm going to guess that Ben's got a couple more things going on than I do. And I'm going to guess that there's a million reasons Ben could storm around, that Ben could be let his frustrations of some deal way larger than a deal that I'm working on could come out but it never will. You will yeah. never know what's going on in Ben's world um, unless you ask. And I'm not afraid to ask him some of these things now because we're such, we're transparent with our partnership. I think the lesson is be present, you know, back to Buddhist teachings, I guess. Um, and this is how Ben would say it, but be present with your people. Be there with your people. Be, be there for your people. Um, you know, Ben didn't owe me anything and he was there for me. He will be present with me. He will, he will listen. He will ask me the questions that, that I don't want to have asked of me. He'll give me the answers that I don't want to freaking hear, but I need to hear. So the lesson is be present, be there for your people, take care of your people. Um, and freaking do whatever it takes to hit your dreams and goals. I don't know anybody else that has the level of achievement that Ben does. And I tell Bentley and my son that, I say, Bentley, you have no idea how lucky we are 
to be able to, to go out and, and spend time with Ben. And now he's getting old enough that he realizes it. The lesson is go for the freaking moon. <laughs> and on your way to the moon, when there's a million people around you, take the time to, to love them and to be with them and to be present with them and don't blow by people in the hallways. I, I just love that. You know, you know what I love right now? Before, Bob, you ask whatever you have. I, I can kind of see it behind your eyes. Uh, <laughs> I love asking people questions they're not ready for and, and tough questions because if you go back now and just rewind and listen to these last five minutes, you, you'll probably hear about 20 lessons as you were hinting at, Bob, right? 20 lessons that came as Ryan attempted to narrow down and figure what is that one lesson, right? He kept hitting on multiple ones along the way. So I just loved watching you process all of that, Ryan, and, and make it all happen. So um, you were telling us before this call about an experience you have coming up in the near future. Talk, talk to our audience a little bit about what you've got coming. So I will be 40 in uh, just about a month. And oh, 40. Bob, remember back then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, Barely. I've I've uh, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've traveled a lot. I've been around a lot. I've I've uh, I've, I've done a lot of neat things in my life. But um, go back to my best friend Nick. And I was born across the street from Nick, like I said. Um, and I I literally talk to Nick every day, as well as a group of individuals we call our Activated Force family. These are my best friends. Uh, most of them are in California. We talk on text multiple times a day. And that all, just real quick side note, that started because my, one of my other best friends, Nate, uh, he got diagnosed with stage three cancer this year. Mm. We came together as a group to, to, to be there, to be supportive, to share health and wellness tips, to, to share inspirational ideas. To, and, and he's just kicking cancers. But anyways, um, I've never gone on a trip with my best friend, Nick, alone. And um, he doesn't know this, but... He gave me so much as a DJ and uh, like by what I learned from him, I've always felt a little bit of uh, like wanting to pay him back, you know? And so now I'm in a position financially, I guess, where I can, I can uh, travel a little bit. So anyways, Nick and I um, have spent this second half of this year looking specifically for spiritual journeys. And we um, have manifested a trip to Peru where we will be spending one week in the jungle with shamans. And then we will spend one week uh, climbing Machu Picchu after. And so what we were talking about before this podcast is the cleansing that we're going through leading up to that, both mentally, physically, and spiritually of removing anything and everything that does not serve us which includes um, things from your diet. So I've been off caffeine, I've been off sugar, no processed foods, very little salts, uh, no chocolate, dang it, during freaking Halloween. I got you covered, buddy. I got you, don't <laughs> worry. So we are embarking on an epic journey and there are no expenses spared on this trip and I'm in a position where I can cover that. And um, Nick said a couple of times, like this is expensive. I said, it doesn't matter. We are not sparing any expense on this trip. We're, we're going on a trip of a lifetime. And uh, so we leave uh, for Peru on 11-11, November 11th. And side note, this happens to be during when Jupiter happens to be shifting into Capricorn, which is a once in a 20 year cycle of a period of massive shifts in consciousness that will occur. So I will be uh, <laughs> hanging out in the jungle with shamans during a massive shift in consciousness. And I- Massively shifting your consciousness because of something that they've also given you to drink, smoke, or, or taste. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm 100% sober. Like I said, like I don't do anything that is- I didn't say it would be alcohol. Yep. Who knows what they're gonna put in your system? Yep, yep, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I used to be a reggae DJ, so I've, I've been down that road. <laughs> but I am 100% sober. And this journey, um, uh, <laughs> you know, you you interpreted that, Chad, with the shamans, and I will let our audience interpret how they want to as well. And maybe we'll have a part two of this and we can share what actually did happen in the jungle. But yeah, we're going on a spiritual quest and I'm going with my best friend and I'm incredibly excited. I'm also a little nervous. 
Ryan, you know, I've had a chance to, to chat with you. you. You've come and done some other things um, in, in different parts of our world. And um, I just, I'm always really impressed by you, man. Um, I, even though part of your, your, your cleanse is you haven't been on social media, so I haven't been able to see these impressive workouts that you're normally up to. And, um, but you were part of our push-up groups. You've seen me doing push-ups in my underwear. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize to that, Ryan. <laughs> I'm um, glad to call you a friend, man. You, it's uh, it's awesome to watch the growth that you, you've had over these last number of years. And, and now you've stepped into a role there in Bellingham, kind of taking Jalene's spot and, and running that, uh, you know, really, I mean, really Ben's very first business. You now, uh, with your partner, Anthony, run that that very first business. And so uh, I think it's just such a testament to, to the hard work you've put in, to the, the willingness to step up and do whatever it takes. Um, and, and really just lived a uh, life since I've known you of, of, and look, we all fall down and we, we all still have missteps and stuff, but you've really been a, the epitome of, of what we talk about here at Windmate Give. So thanks for coming and, and doing this with us, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Bob. Thank you so much for having me. And I guess to, to tie it back and just relate it all back to Ben and, and this, yeah, we went from selling 45 homes in one year to another 40 the next year. And then I, I met my business partner, Ryan. He's been with me almost five years. We sold 50 homes and then almost 60 homes. And and then um, about a year and a half ago, Anthony and I, uh, the Iceman, Anthony Zapata, who I'm so incredibly thankful to be in business with. I look up to him so much. Uh, we became, the to him and I together, the team leaders for the Bellingham Ben Kinney team. Our team will help 400 people deliver the dream of home ownership this year. Right. So that's what I do. And I, I love what I do. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I'm surrounded by people like you guys. I'm so thankful for people like Chad. Um, I think that chip on my shoulder came when I got divorced of, I got to get fit. Like, let me see how, how buff I can get and started working out, you know, but had no idea how to do it. And I learned a little bit along the way. And then I found out about these things called Spartan races. Uh, and, and then a year or two later, I met Chad. And it turns out Chad's like the pro of Spartan races. So Chad started coaching me a little bit. He helped me break my records on uh, – like 5k runs and stuff. And, and, um, now my goal next year is to, uh, and thank you, Chad, for the inspiration on this is to be on the podium for a Spartan race and to complete the trifecta for the Spartan race. Well, maybe we'll do the Montana trifecta weekend. We'll go, uh, we'll go together and we'll go crush that weekend together as a, as a pair, Ryan, and as we keep going, uh, look, I, I think I would love personally to have part two to this episode. I would love when you come back sometime in December, and you are uh, reframed after the trip. I would love to hear what the experience was like. I would love to hear about the the spiritual changes. Heck, I'd love to just hear more about Jupiter being in wherever you said it's going. Capricorn, Chad. Capricorn. Capricorn. All right, forgive me. I, I I'm yeah, lucky I if I can name the planets, Bob. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I that I owe to my now wife, my beautiful wife Vasha, and I'm so incredibly thankful to her. Uh, for all the for a million reasons, but all the spirituality guidance that she gives me, I, I, I joke, but not really. She's my spiritual coach. She showed me that. I found it incredibly interesting, and so I'm incredibly thankful uh, forever to Vasha. Awesome, awesome. Way way to shout out to the one that you need to make sure you remember to shout out to. Look, folks, Ryan just shared a lot with us sharing some great messages. Ryan, I'm going to want the one last thought. So be thinking about that while I'm building this up here for you. Look, if Ryan's story impacted you, share it with somebody. There is somebody who has had a down like Ryan has had. There is somebody who has gone through challenges like Ryan has gone through. There is somebody who needs to hear his story. So we're going to challenge you. Share this episode. Use social media. Heck, just text it right to somebody and say, check out this guy and what he went through. You might relate. This is a great episode to share with friends as we're coming to that time of year where we're really being thankful and grateful for the things that are going on. Hint, hint for another episode. All right, so Ryan, before I wrap this all up by telling people to go to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash winmakegive, before I tell them all the wonderful things about how they can find us at winmakegive.com and the 15pointplan.com. Wait, before okay. or after? You're like telling quiet them this down, stuff Bob. right now. Bob, quiet <laughs> down because I'm making sure they hear all this before they get out of here because I'm right. keeping them with us before they just say, oh, well, Chad's at that part. Ryan, let me give it to you. For the last few moments, what's that one message you want everyone here to walk away with from today's Win Make Give interview? 
Chad, yeah, like like we try to give one message from Ben, I'll probably bundle a few into here. But the first one is, is I feel that it's my duty to pass on what Ben and Jeline have given me. So if if I've given you something or if somebody has given you something that's helped you in your life, I believe that it's your duty to pass that on. And, you know, my dad would walk into a room and every time my dad would walk into a room, the people would would come out of there smiling. So I guess just to make it very simple is leave whatever room you go into a better place than how you found it, regardless of the situation. And do that by being present with the people that you're with. Um, you never know when life might end. And so be present with the people that you're with. Love the people that you're with. Make sure you're telling them that you love them. And have fun. <laughs> like we take life very seriously. So have fun in what we do and don't sell yourself short. I, I joke that if a former DJ can come in and become a, a team leader for a top team in the world and, and, and hit some cool goals that really anybody can do anything. So I guess I would leave you with um, shoot for the moon and don't forget the people that you're going to encounter along the way. And because I might not be on social media um, when this comes out <laughs> or um, can I, can I give the, the, the people my phone number so they can just message yeah. me and I'm on take okay. over. If you want to, it's your phone number. Or, or if they got a Bellingham referral or any real estate related questions. <laughs> nice sales pitch. Um, I, you know, I would love to hear if you heard this podcast and you had something that struck a chord with you and you shared it with somebody, I would love it if you would just text message me. My cell phone is 206-227-5487. So like I said, I, I might still be on a social media uh, fast and you, you couldn't tag me or, or message me on there. So send me a text message. I love it when I get messages like that or questions. I love morning routine stuff. I love meditation stuff. And of course, I love real estate stuff. So questions, 206-227-5487. And Bob, Chad, I am so grateful for you guys having me here on the podcast and for all these podcasts that would make Give the 15-point plan and, and this entire world that I am a part of. Well, Thanks Ryan, so we... We appreciate you. And to take Ryan's message on behalf of Bob and Ben, audience members, those of you who are followers of the 15 point plan, those of you who are listening to Win Make Give, well, we love you. We want to let you know that we love you, right? Because as Ryan's told us, we got to tell you because we never know when something could change tomorrow. So we want you to remember you are always loved by someone, even if it's just Bob, Ben, and I all the way over here behind a microphone for you. And until our next episode, do good. Do good.